This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. Jones are all in uniform for tonight's game. Casey anxious 
to get a look at them just as soon as he can. It has been two weeks since Cisco was used by the Red Sox for about 12, 12 days since Moss worked. Foul tips on a slow breaky pitch, three and two.
goes to the temporary ballpark where the games are being played this year here in Houston. The tremendous excavation for the beautiful new ballpark. And since nothing more than the excavation has been done, it is right now a real Texas bass swimming pool. Occupying the on-deck circle. Now 
Craig up in pitching position. Pickoff play. Throw to second. Hey, close play. Ramon Mejia had to dive back at first. And he just got back in time. They had the pickoff play going, and the timing was excellent. Steve Yoshi Cohn darting in to take the throw from Roger Craig. Mets in tonight's game once again are without the services of Richie Ashford. Richie was hurt in the game yesterday, diving for a ball in foul territory just over the line. And he has a very stiff and a very sore shoulder, which is restrictive throwing, and Richie is out of action. He is in uniform, and he was used as a fence runner in the game this afternoon. Count two and two on Norm Larker. Now Craig Reddy delivers, and the breaking ball just misses three and two. Game time changed from the original schedule will be on the air at 5.55 tomorrow evening in New York for the last of this four-game series. Then Monday night, the Mets are home, meeting the Milwaukee Braves in the polo ground. Now Craig has gone three and two on Norm Larker. Here's the payoff pitch. Ball four, it's outside.
taking advantage of any mistakes that might have been made there and to make this one even better. Our Thronberry will be leading off as we go along to the top of the second.
hard throwing right hander from Brookline, Massachusetts.
Roger has picked 13 men off this year, including Maury Wills and Willie Mays. Outside and low, ball two, two and one on Hal Smith. The American League pennant race, the top three teams were all victorious in action this afternoon and tonight. The Yankees beat the Red Sox 6-1 with Ford winning his 15th. Minnesota beat Detroit 9-2, pass ball winning his 18th. And the Polinski, the winner, is the Angels beat the Birds 2-1 to tonight.
Cano hitting at 233. Right hand back. Now Craig up, up the stretch, delivers. Fastball a little bit low. One ball and no strike. Thank <laughs> you. 
Neither saw the other, and the ball squirted over toward the right field line. Now, two in scoring position. Roger Craig takes his stand from Chris Canisaro. Roger out of his wind up. Down comes his fist. Losing. Allison had two home runs. He now has 25. 
Cleveland beat Kansas City 3-2, to two, Latman besting Dan Fister. And the Angels beat the Orioles 2-1, to one, Belinsky over Estrada. That's the rundown on scores, and for the rundown on action, Ralph Kanter. Okay, Bob, it's Rod Kinnear, right-hand batting second baseman, and his first pitch is a fastball. Outside for ball one. Kinnear scoring around is going to push a bunt out towards second base. One ball, no strike. Roger Gray. Now 
Farrell into the windup and delivers, and it's a fastball through for strike one. Farrell beat the Mets on May 22nd, 3-2. to two. He lost to them on June 11th, 3-1, to one, and also lost to them on June 22nd, 2 to nothing. There's a fastball for strike two. So Farrell now picking the count up. It's three balls and two strikes on Rod Goodell. Game favor the Houston Colts 45. Now the windup in the 3 2 pitch. A fastball popped up in the air. The second baseman waiting, Joe Malfitano, and he puts it away for out number one. And that will bring up Chris Canazero. And he'll be for the out batting 256. Canazero coming on batting 214. Chris, right hand batting catcher for the Mets. In the batter's box to take up with his first encounter with Kurt Farrell. Now Farrell in the windup and the first pitch, a fastball outside, ball one. Farrell has struck out four batters so far in the game in two and one third innings. He has a total of 178 strikeouts on the year. Drive to right center field coming on the hit. He can't get to it. It drops in for a base hit. And that is the first hit of the game off of Kirk Farrell. It will bring up Roger Craig. All 45s have one run on four hits. The Mets have one hit now. And they have their first base runner. Roger Craig, right hand batting pitcher coming out of the dugout. He's hitting 0 44. No home runs and two runs batted in. leader in the National League, Sandy Koufax, who has been out of action for quite some time. He leads the National League with 209 strikeouts. Here's a first pitch to Craig. It's bunted out towards the right side and going foul. Strike one counted, Roger. One man out, the on-deck batter, Elia Chacon. Sandy, Sandy Koufax has been throwing batting practice for the Dodgers. And they are looking forward to his reappearance in the lineup. One strike pitch to Craig outside. One ball, one strike. Both Norm Larker and the third baseman, Bob Aspermani, looking for the bunt against Craig, charging very strongly. One ball, one strike. to work. And the next pitch is bunted foul again, so it's strike two. Fastball pitcher like Turk Farrell, very tough to punt. And especially punt the ball, ball on the ground. And here in the cold stadium, the lights are not the best, as this is a temporary setup. is lying right by Larker down the right field line. A base hit coming over Mahias. He's up for the ball. He throws on into second base, but going over to third on the base hit, Chris Canazero. So Roger Craig, after failing the bunt, moves Canazero all the way to third base, and with one out, runners are at first and third, and Elio Chacon comes up. Elio was caught lucky in the first inning. One of the four strikeout victims by Kurt Farrell. Hitting 231. And now Farrell back on top, and the first pitch is a fastball high, ball one. Bob Asperamani at third base, even with the bag, looking for a play at either home or second base. The rest of the infield set up for the double play with one man out. one nothing game, the Colts lead. There's a fastball back to Chacon, again high. Two balls and no strike. Two and all as Farrell takes two 
too long in the mound as Jacone steps out of the batter's box. Now Jacone calling Cookie Lavagetto up to have a talk. Cookie, the third base coach. Sally Hemus back in the line for the Mets at first base. He's been out on a scouting tour, and he joined the Mets here, or as Bob Murphy put it, the Mets joined him here in Houston. Sally Hemus makes his home in this Texas city. Cone comes back to the batter's box. And Farrell goes back to work. And the next pitch is high inside. It moves Chicone away from the plate. Ball three. So Dirk Farrell, who has yet to walk a man, now pitch away from loading up the bases. Three balls and no strike. Farrell into the stretch position. Back to Chicone, a fastball that's inside for ball four. That loads him up and brings up Charlie Neal. Charlie flat out to right field his first time up. Batting 251, right hand batting third baseman. On a third base, Chris Canazero. At second base, Roger Craig. Moved down there after the walk to Chicone. game in favor of the Houston Colts 45. Top of the third inning. Farrell with the sign now into the windup and delivers. Fast ball high for ball one. Just above the letter. any time down here. They have them up and throwing early. But their relief staff has done an excellent job this year. Here's the one off pitch to Neal. Fastball inside again and high. Two balls and no strike. So Farrell now falling behind Neal after walking Chacon and Hal Smith walking the ball back to the pitcher's mouth. to Farrell on the mound. As Bob Tiefenau warms up in the bullpen for the Colt 45. Tiefenau, a knuckleball specialist. Houston, one run on four hits. The Mets have no runs and two hits. And the Mets with the bases loaded and the next pitch to the line right through the middle in the center field, a base hit. Going for third Canadero now coming around from second base, Roger Craig. The throw coming in is cut off, but too late. And going on down to second base after the single on the throw in is Johnny Neal. And Chicone moves over to third base, and the Mets now have taken the lead by a score of two to one here in the top of the third. Still only one man out. Runners at second and third, and Gene Woodling comes up. And now the sign goes out to give him an intentional pass. And Farrell in the stretch position throws ball one. The two RBIs for Charlie ne Neal is 54th and 55th of the year. There's ball two to Woodley. The on-deck batter is Mark Dromberry. Farrell again back outside for ball three. Three and all. him up once again. And coming up, Mark Strawberry. Mark struck out swinging his first time up. He's batting 249. 14 home runs and 40 runs better than
tied the Mets 1-2-3 in the first and second inning. But the Mets after Keneal had gone out. Coming up with four consecutive men on base. Now Farrell taking plenty of time as the sign. And comes back to Thromberg with a fastball that's hit out the left field. It could drop in. Coming on the left fielder Sangler. He can't get to it. Sorry from third base. Elias Jacone and following him around is Johnny Neal. And the Mets now lead it by a score of four to one. Moving on down to second base on the base hit, Gene Woodling. And now the Mets with runners at first and second base, and the batter is Jim Hickman. That ball was looped out the left field. The left fielder, Al Sanger, playing a very deep left field, could not get to it. It dropped in front of him. And two men scored. And with the two in, it's now four to one. Jim Hickman, right-hand batting center fielder, steps up. It's all even now at four feet. Jim struck out swinging his first time up, and he looks at the curve for strike one. to the plate with a curveball, hit down to third base. The third base for Nat Romani comes up with the ball, goes over, steps on third, throws the first base in time for the double play, and that retires the side. In the inning for the New York Mets, this is all four runs on four hits. And they leave one man on, and the score at the end is two and one half innings to play. The New York Mets four, the history one, 45, one. Now here's one of your favorite vocalists with a bright new tune about New York's favorite beer. Ask me, fix the mode, what beer to buy. I'll tell you. That wine gold extra dry. Now that's the beer to buy. It's flavored brisk and bright. And clearly extra dry. It's New York's favorite brew. The only one for you. Because it's dry.
batting 125. No home runs and two runs batted in. Two RBIs scoring the tying and winning runs against the Pittsburgh Pirates in a 4-3 win for the Colt 45 the other night. That was his first Major League base hit. now back to work. It's a slow curveball over for strike one. Norm Larker taken out of the game because of a swollen left foot hit by a foul tip in his previous time up. One strike count on the left-hand batter. And now Craig taking too much time, so Robert steps out of the batter's box. The signs from Chris Canazero. That is one strike pitch, a fastball that's high inside. One ball, one strike. One and one as Craig comes back to the plate with a pitch that's hit down to first base. Somebody takes it on the bounce. And makes the play on the system for out number two. And with two out, the batter will be Carl Warwick, the center fielder. Warwick did into a fourth play his first time up, batting 259. They bat him from the right hand side. And the first pitch is ball one. One ball, no strike. and delivers back again. It's a curveball over for strike one. One ball, one strike with two men out. That's four runs on four hits. The Colt 45's one run on four hits. And now Craig misses again for ball two. Two balls and one strike. and delivers low outside for ball three. Mets scored four runs in the top of the third inning to take over the lead, four to one. They lost the first game by a score of four to three. There's a swing and a foul ball on the three-one pitch, so Roger now has picked the count up to three balls and two strikes.
second base, Carl Warwick for the short lead. And Craig now back to Astromani, and the pitch is hitting the Cincinnati will be in over the weekend. 
And he is Chacon walked to load him up. Charlie Neal drove in two with a base hit. And Morris Romberry came up and drove in two more with a base hit. Four to two. Two men out and Chris Canizero. Right hand batter in. There's a first pitch. It's low outside for ball one.
Trick batter Bob Lillis. Craig back with a curve, and there's a fly ball hit to left field. Wendy waiting. Tom moves in a couple of steps and makes a catch. So Roger gets his first man here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. And Bob Lillis comes up for the third time. Lillis one for three in the game, picking up a two-base hit when he blooped the ball out to shallow right field. Bob Keneal went out to get his glove on the ball, but it was a tough chance, and when he was hit by Joe Christopher, Storr gave a two-base hit. Lillis batting 242 for the year and batting from the right-hand side. Craig, a fastball bounced off of the plate. Roger going back, has to wait. The ball comes on down, and Willis comes up with another hit. Hit number seven off Roger Craig, and no one had a chance for that one as Willis bounced it right off of home plate. The ball bounced so high in the air that no one could make a play. And Willis now with two hits in the game, and both of them stood on the gift side.
Then Craig Narrow back on top and back to the play. Low again at ball four. That puts the tie run on at first base. And this thing that goes down to first on Roger Craig's third walk of the game. Bob Doris moves down to second base and Ramon Mejia steps into the batter's box. up the first hit of the game off Roger Craig in the first inning. He stole second base but was forced out at third base as Carl Warwick ended the inning. Then in the third inning, Mejia grounded to the shortstop, so he is one for two. That is 287 with 23 home runs and 68 runs battered in. Roger Craig with his first pitch to the right-hand batter outside. Low for ball one. The curveball way outside. And Craig now behind 1-0 oh to Mahir. All I'm throwing in the bullpen for the Mets as they lead in the game 4-2. to two. Craig into the stretch position and back with the one pitch. 1-0 oh pitch. It's on for a strike breaking over the outside corner. One ball, one strike. Enfield back looking for the double play with one man out. The ball way outside. And Craig now behind one and all to Mahir. All and throwing in the bullpen for the net. As they lead in the game four to two. position and back with the one pitch. One off pitch. It's on for a strike. Third ball breaking over the outside corner. One ball, one strike. Infield back looking for the double play with one man out. Runners at first and second base. again back to the plate with a fastball popped off of the hands in foul territory. Cannondale tries to get to the ball, but it wasn't high enough in the air to allow him to get to it. It'll go a strike two. Another count now, one ball and two strikes. To Roger Craig asking for the ball that was fouled off to be put back in play. So Cannondale goes back, picks it up, docks it to Al Barney. Al looks at it and puts it back in play. So Roger Craig will be working with the same ball. Pitchers like to feel a certain balls. Of course, they like to keep the ball in play if that's the case. Some feel a little bit smaller, and also some are not quite as slippery as others. Roger likes to work with a very roughed up ball, throwing a lot of breaking pitches, and also throwing the screw ball off of his fastball action. Now it's one and two as Greg catches the mound and comes back with a curve that is low outside. Two balls and two strikes. second base, Al Spangler at first, and Roman Mejia is the batter. All men run well. Two balls and two strikes as Craig throws a curve again, a swing and a miss for strike three. So Roger picks up a big strikeout, his third in the game, for out number two. And now coming on, Dave Roberts. Came in the game as a pitch hitter for Norm Larcher, who started the game. Larcher went out because of a bruised instep on his left foot as a result of a foul ball. Robertson's first time up off Craig, rounded out the first base. Now batting from the left hand side for the second time. Two men out, runners at first and second. Score four to two in favor of the Mets, and the first pitch to Roberts to curve the south side for ball one. Roger on this warm evening has thrown quite a few pitches. In the first game, Jay Hook started the game and was taken out after six innings, and when he went out of the game, he let two nothing. 
now back to work in the 1-0 pitch to Roberts. He curved it again outside. Ball two. It's going to second base. Too late. Back in ahead of the throw, Bob Lillard. After Hook went out of the game in the first game, the Colts started up at 2-2. The Mets took the lead in the top of the ninth, 3-2. And lost it when the Colts scored two in the bottom half of the ninth to win the game four to three. Craig now back on top and back to the plate. A curveball that swung on and fouled down in the dirt. Not going to two balls and one strike. with the Colts 45. For the day game tomorrow, game time in New York will be at 3.55. It'll be Bob Bruce, right-hand curveball with a record of nine wins and eight losses against Craig Anderson. Anderson has won three and lost 17. He picked up his 17th loss in the first game here today. Game time in New York is 5.55. Stand corrected at 3.55 here, 5.55 in New York. And there's the next pitch to Roberts outside, a curveball, three balls and one strike. That game tomorrow will be on radio and TV. looking for the sign, now sets on the mound. Runners at first and second. And the pitch back is a curveball hit high in the air to center field. Jim Hickman moving in, now waiting. And he makes the catch to retire the side. In the inning, no runs on one hit, no errors. A walk and two men left on, and the score at the end of four innings of play. A New York Mets fourth, the Colt 45-2. Now, once again, here's Bob Murphy to tell you about Milwaukee and Cincinnati and bring you up to date on the score. All right, Ralph, the Milwaukee Braves will be in New York Monday night for their final appearance of the season in the Polo Ground. And before the game on Monday night, to add to the enjoyment of the evening, there will be field events. Those of you planning to attend the game on Monday night, hope you're planning to come early so you won't miss any of the pregame activity. Remember, too, if you're driving in, the Yankee Stadium parking facilities will be available, as well as the parking locations in and around the polo ground. A wheelbarrow contest, the coaches blindfold, spun around, and then trying to locate home plate. A bungo hitting contest, catcher's accuracy throwing contest, and a relay throwing accuracy contest. That's on Monday night with the Braves in town. In other games, the Phillies beat the Braves 6-4. McClish winning his 10th in relief, loser Bob Henley. The Giants beat the Cubs 7-2. Pierce, the winner, he's now 14-5. and Cardwell, the loser. We're in the sixth inning with New York leading 4-2. Around comes the arm from Farrell, a swing and a miss. He threw in the third stitch. Rod went right after him. The count is even at one ball, one strike.
Wheeler stalled out. That's the seventh strikeout of the game for Farrell.
Enjoy the extra coolness you feel in your throat when you smoke cool. Enjoy that bright, clear taste all day long. Come up to cool. Cool with a pure white filter or cool without filter.
be coming up. Roberts will be hitting for the third time. He has grounded out to Thronberry and fly to center. Defense hurt the Mets in the afternoon ball game. They were guilty of five errors, including one in the ninth inning that won the game for the Houston Colts 45. Now Craig working under adverse conditions. Runners on first and third. Two men down, and the batter is the left-hand hitter, Dave Roberts. Two infield errors, and the guns have runners at first and third. Here's the pitch. A pop foul over toward the dugout. Canisero hoping for a play, running hard. And he stumbled over the bat boy and fell. And let's see how this one is called. He may be called out. He will be. The bat boy crossed near the on-deck circle by the on-deck hitter, Carl Warwick. Failed to get out of the way of Chris Canisero. And Canisero, with his eye on the ball and running toward the field boxes, stumbled over the leg of the bat boy and fell. And the ball landed just a few feet beyond Canisero. And so, Roberts is out on the play. Gives Canisero credit for a putout. The side is retired in the sixth inning with no runs, no hits. Two errors and two left on. So now at the end of six, the score, the New York Mets four and the Houston Cole 45, three. All right, Bob, thank you very much. Jerk Farrell out taking his warm-up tosses now. special event that's going to take place at the Polo Grounds during the Mets' last homestand that you won't want to miss on Sunday, September 16th during pregame ceremonies before the game against the 1961 National League champion Cincinnati Reds. Bohack Supermarkets and King Corn Stamps will present a fully equipped Daytona Light automobile to the most popular Mets player. On that day, there will also be 2,000 guests of Bohack at the Polo Grounds, one of whom also will receive a fully equipped Daytona Light. So remember the date, Sunday, September 16th, Bohack Day. Tickets for this game and all future games are now on sale at the Polo Grounds, Grand Central Station, and Pennsylvania Station. Reservations may also be made at all Howard Close stores. Elio Chacon is at the plate, and the first pitch is in there for a call, strike one.
up and under the stretch. Chacon leads it first. And here's the pitch to Neal. Swung and it's a high hopper down the third baseline. Taken by the catcher and the throw on the first. Not in time. He's safe. Neal and Chacon holds it second. Al Smith out there to make the play on the ball. Wheeled and through the first, but not in time to get Neal as he beat it out for another base hit. Chacon holding at the second base. Back-to-back base hit. Tiefenauer is up and throwing in the bullpen. Right-hander and knuckleballer Bob Tiefenauer warming up for the cold 45s. Here's Gene Woodling at the plate of left-hand batter. who is popped out, walked and flat out to center field. Runners leading at first and second base. Kirk Farrell with a pitch swung on, and it's a high pop into short center field. Coming in is Carl Warwick. He's underneath, and he's waiting. He makes the catch for the out. There's no advance. One away on Woodling's fly ball to center, and Marv Thornberry's coming up. Marv Thornberry sliced the base hit into left field with the bases loaded, and the top half of the third to account for two of the four runs that the Mets scored in the top of the third. Mets got all four of their runs in the top of the third, and they lead here by a score of 4 3. You know, now's the time to sit back, relax, and light up a cool cigarette. at second. Charlie Neal leads it first. Here's a throw to second, and he's out at second base. They got Chacon. Chacon has been picked off as Bob Lilly, the shortstop, got in behind him. So the pickoff goes one six. Two away, Neal at second.
Americans play it, people say it. My beer is Rheingold, the dry beer, and dry tells you why. Yes, sir, dry tells you Rheingold has a brisk, bright, clean taste all its own. Discover the difference dry makes. Pour yourself a tall, refreshing glass of Rheingold Extra Dry. Enjoy it, along with the ball game. Now for the New York Mets, Rick Hersher has gone into left field in place of Gene Whitley. Now playing left field for the Mets, number six, Rick Hersher. So if you're keeping a scorecard, Hersher will bat third in place of Gene Whitley. As we go to the bottom half of the seventh inning now, the code 45s have Carl Warwick at the place. Right hand batter. Craig, bending from the waist, looking in for the time. He has it into the windup, and the pitch is on the way. It's swung out and fouled out. Carl Warwick's one of the few men in the major leagues who throws left and bats right. Works the pitch and it's inside for ball. It's one and one. The official paid attendance here tonight, 6,568. Total attendance in the ballpark, 7,678. There's a pitch. Low and outside and coming all the way back to the screen. It's two balls and one strike. They are here and in uniform tonight. There's a pitch low for ball. It's three and one. Sherman Jones has been here in uniform for this entire series. The three one pitch. Blowing away and he walks here. So the Colt 40 fouls open up. The bottom half of the seven. By getting Carl Warwick out at first. He represents potential tying run. Coming up is Bob Aspermani. Two for three tonight. It was his base hit. That uh, enabled the Code 45s to win in the bottom half of the ninth this afternoon. Craig now up and into the stretch as Warwick leads his first, and here's the pitch. It's in there for a call strike. Bob Thornberry charging at first base was Charlie Neal at third in anticipation of a bunt attempt, but he did not square. Lum Harris coaching at third, running the strategy department of the Houston Co. 45. There's a pitch out. Thought something might be on it, wasn't it? It's one and one. Craig is up and under the stretch. Go over. 1-1. One, one. Perhaps you heard the announcement in the background that tomorrow it'll be Bob Bruce going for Gold 45 against Craig Anderson of the New York Mets. That's a pitch high. 2-1. Craig Anderson came on this afternoon to pitch the ninth inning and was the losing pitcher in the afternoon game.
this afternoon. Throw over, Warwick's back safely. Roger Craig is not reluctant about throwing over to first base. Throws over again, not in time. Nor is he bashful about the number of times he will throw over. He has 13 pickoffs this season as a result. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball. It's strike one to Hal Smith.
Richie Ashburn out of action for the New York Mets with a sore shoulder that he injured the opening game of this series when he went across the line and left to try to field a foul pop. Dive ended up uh, in the mud hole down there all over and sustained uh, a bruised shoulder that has him out of action, can't throw. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Swung out and missed. Strike two. It's one and two. Jackson the winner. And 
At the end of five innings of play now, it's the Los Angeles Dodgers six, the Pittsburgh Pirates nothing. Pete Richards pitching for the Dodgers. McBeam started for the Pirates from Avon the third and Joe Gibbon in the third. In the American League, the New York Yankees defeated the Boston Red Sox six to one. Whitey Ford over Don Schwal. The Chicago White Sox beat Washington six to three. Early win, getting the 299th career victory. Rudolph the loser. Minnesota 9, Detroit 2, as Fastball was the winner, his 18th win, and Mossy the loser. Cleveland 3, Kansas City 2, Latman the winner, Fister the loser. Los Angeles Angels 2, Baltimore Orioles 1, Bo Belinsky the winner, he's 9-9. Nine nine. Now Chuck Estrada the loser. For the Colts 45, Billy Goodman stays in the ballgame at second base. And plays to Joey Amalfitana for whom he hits. New York Mets here in the top half of the eighth inning will send up Jim Hickman. He is nothing for three tonight. Here's a special announcement for all New York Mets fans. Fan Appreciation Day will be held at the Polo Grounds on Sunday, September 23rd. This is the Mets' last home game, so listen to this station for further announcements and details next week. Pitch to Hickman, swung on, it's a foul ball coming back. And it is going into the stand and out of play. Third baseman Rob Estramani gave it a run, but it's out of play.
Marcus Ferro pitch swung on and foul back and out of play. It's strike one. Felix Mantia is loosening up down in the bullpen area of the New York Mets now. Strike one count to Clarence Choo Choo Coleman. into the stretch and here's the pitch swung on and again a high foul ball back and out of play two strike count to Choo Choo Farrell looks around the outfield wind blowing out toward left He's up and into the stretch. Runners lead first and third. The pitch, that's ball outside. It's one and two. Choo Choo swinging that bat. Standing in and waiting. Now he steps out of the batter's box. Back in. Turk Farrell into the stretch. Pitch is swung out and it's a fly ball going deep to right field and Mejia comes on, makes the catch, tags up and coming down the line to score is Jim Hickman. And the Mets are out in front here by a score of five to four. Ball was hit on the button out into right field. Mejia skidded a couple of steps just as he got to the ball but managed to control himself and enough to make the catch. But it was deep enough to score Jim Hickman, and that was the idea. So scored as a sacrifice fly and a run better than the Choo Choo Coleman. Holding at first base is Joe Christopher and Chris Canizero is coming up with one man out. Mets five and the Colt 45 is four. Canizero is two for three. Sends a drive into right field. This is going to fall in for a base hit. Christopher turns it second, digging for third, and Mejia's overruns the ball. Christopher slides into third, and the throw instead comes to the plate all the way. And on the throw in, Canizero moves to second. Runners at second and third. Score that as an error on Mejia's. Score it as an error on Mejia's. A single and an error gives the best runners at second and third with one man out, and that is Chris Canizero's third base hit of this game. Roger Craig coming out of the dugout now and coming on up here for the Mets. On Stephen R. Still. Throwing in the bullpen. The Mets have 13 hits off Turk Farrell. The most that he is allowed in a game this season. Time call here as coach Cookie Lavagetta has called Roger Craig down to talk to him to see what they're going to do here. There's one man out. Jim Umbright is now throwing in the bullpen. Jim Umbright is up and throwing in the bullpen for the Colt 45s. Here's the pitch to Craig. Swung out and missed. Strike one. Colt 45s with the infield in here to try to cut off a run at the plate. Christopher is the base runner at third, and Canisero is the base runner at second. Roger Craig had a base hit in the third inning of this game. straight away. Lines and fires pitch out. And it's 1-1. Nothing on. Code 45 scanning on a pitch out that the Mets just might have a play on. Trying to squeeze a run home perhaps. But it didn't turn out that way and the count is one ball and one strike. 
pitch is swung on. It's a high pop up over the plate. It's in foul territory. Not coming back and coming back to catch your Hal Smith. He has a play. Makes the catch and runs it back to the area of home plate to prevent any advance. Two away. Uh, Treg is fouled out to the catcher. Now, Elio Chacon is coming up. Runners second and third. Two men out. The Mets five and the Colts four. in this game. Carroll again working straight away. And there for a call, strike one. We're on the top half of the eighth inning. Again the pitch. Check swing, ground ball, the free space. Taken there by Dave Roberts, makes the play unassisted to retire the side. Helio checks the swing, but has got it out up to first base unassisted. And the top of the eighth, the Mets got one run. On three hits, there was one error, and two men left. So at the end of seven and a half innings of play, the score is the New York Mets five, and the Houston go 45-4. You know, everybody's got favorites. Favorite foods, favorite sports, favorite girls. Before the baseball season began, everybody had his favorite pick to win the pennant. And now all over New York, people are talking about their favorite candidate for Miss Rango 1963. Who will next year's Miss Rango be? Well, that's up to you. Your votes will decide the winners. So next time you're ordering Rango Extra Dry at any one of the 45,000 stores and taverns that sell New York favorite beer, drop in a vote or two for your favorite candidate at the familiar Rango ballot box. No matter who your favorite is, Drew, Chris, Loretta, Beverly, Eileen, or Carol, enjoy a glass of Rango Extra Dry, the one beer that year after year has been the chosen favorite of New Yorkers. Have a sip of Rheingold's extra clean, bright taste, and you'll join the millions who say, my beer is Rheingold, the dry beer. For the New York Mets, Felix Mantia is in to play second base. Leading off for the Colt 45, top of the batting order, shortstop Bob Lillis. Glad to center, double single, and grounded out second to first. Empire behind the plate getting his own uh, lineup card straightened out at this moment. Manzia will bat seventh in the batting order of the New York Mets. Roger Craig with the pitch, a breaking ball in there for a curl strike one to Bob Lillis. Opening up the bottom half of the eighth inning. Again the pitch. Swung on and line. it up, relays it in, turning and holding it first. Is Lillis with his third base hit of the night. He represents potential tying run with nobody out. Al Spangler's coming up. Glad the right struck out, walked and was on on Camille Zera. Camille had successive errors in the bottom half of the sixth inning. One on Spangler, one on Mejia. Coming up, 
but Ken has gone out to the mound. And for the New York Mets, Larry Foss is throwing in the bullpen. Larry Foss, recently acquired from the Pirate organization, he attended Asheville, is warming up in the bullpen. Foss is a right-hander. There now and waiting. One man out. Lily. Rookie Dave Roberts is on deck now for the Colt 45. Great. Checks and deals. Pitch is swung on and missed. One and one to Mejia. being run by coaches Lum Harris and Cott Deal in the absence of manager Harry Kraft who is bedded with the virus. Last year when Paul Richards left the Baltimore Orioles before the end of the season, Lum Harris took over there as temporary manager. Now, the 1-1 pitch. Swung out in full foul down past Harris. The coaches box at third. 1-2 to Mejia. looks around the outfield. Wind blowing out toward left still, whipping the flag. Roger looks in for a sign. Has one now. Here's the one-two pitch. He's in there for a call. Strike three. Got him looking. And for Roger Craig, his first strike out of this ball game, a big one. Two men out and a runner in second. Dave Robbins is coming up. Robbins came in in place of Norm Marker early in the ball game. He has himself been up three times without a hit. He came up to hit for Larker in the bottom half of the third inning. 24, Dave Robbins. Norm Larker fouled the ball off his foot. Position. Here's the pitch to the left hand batter in there for a call, strike one. That's five, the Colt 45 score. Now Lillard leads at second base. Here's the pitch, missing outside for ball. It's one and one. Foss still working in the bullpen for the Mets. Pirates had him in spring training with the big club, and uh, this season he has been at Asheville in the Sally League, record of 10 and 5. Now the 1 1 pitch. Missing low on the way, and it's two balls and one strike for Dave Roberts. Major League hit here night before last, a double that beat the Pittsburgh Pirates. He waits for the 2 1 pitch. It's on the way, swung on, and belted into right field for a base hit. Charged by Christopher, Rodney Curtis, Rivers coming home. There'll be no play on him. As he comes across, puts the crowd around him. It's 5 5 5. Holding it first base. Charged by Christopher. Back. 
after his first in time, uh, the outset retires to side. So in the bottom half of the eighth, the Coach 45 rod with one run on two hits. No errors and one left. So at the end of eight full innings of play, the score is the New York Mets five and the Houston Coach 45 five. That'll be September 10th. The New York Mets will be in town at the Polo Grounds to take on the Milwaukee Braves. will be led in by Warren Spahn, Lou Burdett, Joe Adcock, Eddie Matthews, and of course, Henry Aaron, one of the Major League's outstanding performers. The Gold 45s will be in for their, or rather the Milwaukee Braves will be in for their last appearance of this season. And before the ball game uh, on Monday night, there will be field events including relay throwing from the outfield for speed, fungo hitting for accuracy, catcher throwing into a barrel at second base, and a wheelbarrow contest between the coaches. A blindfolded wheelbarrow contest to see which coaches blindfolded can find home plate. That's on Monday night. Say, do you know why Ryan Gold tastes so good? Well, dry tells you why. It tells you that Rheingold is brewed the long, slow, costly way for a flavor that's brisk and bright and clean, clear through. But why not find that out for yourself? Enjoy a cold glass of Rheingold right now. We'll be going out of the top half of the ninth inning, and the New York Mets will send up Charlie Neal. Tonight, against the Houston Gold 45 this season, Charlie Neal is batting 429, 15 for 35. in the bottom of the seventh. The Mets went ahead in the top of the eighth. So 45 have tied it again in the bottom of the eighth, so the Mets are trying to see what they can do in the top of the ninth. That pitch misses low. It's one and one. Charlie Neal had a bases loaded single, a drive in two runs in the top half of the third inning. side from catcher Hal Smith. The pitch. Swung on and has a looping fly ball into right. Roman Mejia has moved in underneath. He's waiting and he makes the catch for the out. One away for the Mets in the top half of the ninth and that will bring up Rick Hersher coming up for his first time in the game. Gene Woodling started in left field the night for the Mets. Pitch low and away for ball one. Frank Thomas has not played in the ball game tonight.
O'Neill and Hersher have flied out to Mejia's two away and Mar Thornberry coming up. He had a bases loaded single in the third to drive in two runs. Otherwise, he gets struck out, popped out, and struck out. Missing 
outside. It's three and one. Jim Umbright is up and throwing again in the bullpen for the Colts.
San Francisco Giants won their ball game this afternoon. The Cincinnati Reds have lost their game tonight. The Los Angeles Dodgers are leading in their ball game tonight as the National League pennant race is really tightened up here as we're in the last month to play. The Cincinnati Reds will be at the Polo Grounds on Friday night, September 14th, Saturday afternoon, September 15th, Sunday afternoon, September 16th. It'll be the final appearance of the Cincinnati Reds. They are the defending National League champions making their final trip in the polo ground. So we hope you'll be on hand. We're going to be going here to the top half of the 10th inning. And the New York Mets are going to be sending up Jim Hickman, Joe Christopher, and Felix Mantilla.
Jim Humbright sets the side down in order in the top of the tenth with no runs on, no hits, no errors, and none left. And at the end of nine and one half innings of play, the score is New York Mets five and the Houston Code 45 five. Well, you know, fans, any time is a good time to enjoy the brisk, bright flavor of Rheingold, but it goes especially well with these wonderful autumn days that are coming up. Yes, sir, wonderful days call for the wonderful taste of Rheingold Extra Dry, a taste that's brisk and bright and is clean, clear through. Rheingold is beer and beer should taste, and dry tells you why. It tells you that Rheingold is brewed the long, slow, costly way extra dry to be extra refreshing. So you better stock up now and have plenty of cool, refreshing Rheingold extra dry on hand. Enjoy those wonderful days with the wonderful beer Rheingold extra dry. Bottom half of the tenth inning, Roger Craig still on the mound for the New York Mets. He started, he's come all the way. The Colts will be sending up Bob Lillis, shortstop, who has three hits tonight. Driven in one run and scored one himself. Lillis, one time, the property of the Dodgers. Bunch of all down to first place line. Thornberry left the field. It can Craig get there ahead of the runner? He cannot. He's safe. A perfect cut by Bob Lillis. Thornberry uh, had to play it, and then Lillis beat Roger Craig to the bag. So it's a base hit for Lillis, his fourth of the night. Coming here in the bottom half of the tenth inning. He has punted his way on. in his last 11 times up. Al Feinler coming up now for the Gold 45. The New York Mets, of course, have to protect against the likelihood of the sacrifice here with Lillis representing potential winning run on that first base for the Gold 45s in the bottom half of the 10th inning.
momentarily fired on the first, but the minute he did, Lillard's headed for third. Thornberry's throw back across the mound to Chacon, covering the bag was not in time. Rookie Dave Roberts. Dave Roberts is coming up now. He's single to drive and a run in the bottom half of the eighth inning. He is taking a moment to talk to Coach Lum Harris. He's a left-hand batter. In Los Angeles, the Dodgers are batting in the bottom half of the eighth, leading the Pirates by a score of 6-1. to one. 24, Dave Roberts. Has a pitch in there for a call strike. the bag at third. Roger Craig works for the windup. And the pitch is low for ball one. It's one and one. The Mets five and the Colts 45 five in the bottom half of the tenth inning. Here's the one one pitch. It's in there for a call strike two. Steps back out of the batter's box, gets a handful of dirt, and comes back in. Craig leaning way over to get a sign, and as he does, Roberts backs out of the batter's box. Now, Craig takes a moment, puts the palm of his hand right down on the dirt, wipes his fingertips. Now he's up to work. Here's the one-two pitch. It's inside. It's two and two. The Colts with two men out and a runner at third in the bottom of the tenth.
Well, keep in mind that the Mets will be home at the Polo Grounds on Monday night to take on the Milwaukee Braves. And they will be there on September 14th at night, September 15th in the afternoon, and September 16th in the afternoon against the Cincinnati Reds. Then Monday the 17th is off. These Houston Code 45s will be on on the 18th for a Twanite doubleheader, the 19th for a Twanite doubleheader, and the 20th for an afternoon game. And then comes the season-ending series at home for the Mets against the Chicago Cubs. Tickets, of course, now on sale for all of those games. Do you ever notice how some ball players are naturals? You know, some of the major leaguers, through determination and hard work, get to be pretty good athletes. But the really great stars, I mean the all-time greats, well, they were natural ball players from the day they were born. Same way with beer. Most beers taste pretty good, but the really great ones, they are natural. Like Ryan Gold Extra Dry. Even before it's brewed, Ryan Gold is naturally a great beer. Because Ryan Gold uses only the finest natural ingredients. The finest grain, the finest hops, and the purest water in Ryan Gold Extra Dry. Rheingold is brewed long and slow, brewed naturally. Even the sparkle in Rheingold is natural. Yes, Rheingold's natural brewing takes extra time and that costs extra money, but there are no shortcuts to an extra dry beer. When was the last time you enjoyed the delicious, brisk, and bright flavor of an extra dry beer? When was the last time you enjoyed a Rheingold? Well, here in Houston, the Code 45s scored a run on a wild pitch in the bottom half of the 10th inning to defeat the New York Mets by a score of 6-5. to five. And to tell you something about today's activity here, here is Ralph Kiner. Well, Roger Craig outlasted the starting pitcher for the Colt 45. Dick Farrell, as Farrell won nine innings, it gave up to Jim Umbright. But he could not, could not last the Houston Colt team at all as they scored in the 10th inning to win the doubleheader. Winning the fourth, first game by a score of 4-3 to three, and the second game by a score of 6-5. to five. Roger went nine and two-thirds innings. That is the second time that he has gone in extra innings this season. In the nine and two-thirds innings, he gave up six runs, allowed 12 base hits. He struck out five and walked five. In the tenth inning, the first man up, Bob Willis, beat out a bunt for a base hit. Roger a little bit late covering from the pitcher's mound, and he was not able to make the play. Then Al Spangler laid down a perfect sacrifice bunt and moved Bob Willis over to second base. And when Roman Mejia scrounged out the third. The break of the game came for the Houston Colt 45s and Bob Willis very alertly went over to third base on the throw to first base. As he was on third base, Roger Craig worked to Dave Roberts who had singled in the tying run in the eighth inning, the fifth one for the Colt 45. He got the count to three and two and gave up ball four, which also turned out to be a wild pitch. And on the wild pitch, Willis scored from third base with the winning run of the ball game. For the Colt 45s, their 14th extra inning game, the fifth one they have won this year. They have lost eight and tied one. The Mets played their 16th extra inning game, and they lost their 12th while winning four. It was also the 53rd one-run game played by the Mets. They have won 16 now and lost 37. In the series here at Houston, the Colt 45s have won seven of the eight games played here in Houston. One game remaining, that'll be tomorrow. Game time will be at 5.55 New York time. Scheduled to go on that game, Bob Bruce for the Colt 45s. He has a record of nine wins and eight losses against Craig Anderson, who has lost 16 in a row, and he has a record of three and 17. At the Polar Grounds, the Colt 45s have a record of two wins and two losses. They'll be coming in for five more games playing in the Polar Grounds on the 18th, 19th, and 20th. The 18th will be a twi-night doubleheader, the 19th a twi-night doubleheader, and a single-day game on the 20th. On the season, the Colt 45s have won nine of the 12 games played so far, and the Mets now on the road have lost their 58th game. They have won 17. They have won 18 while losing 51 at home, and their overall record now, 35 wins and 109 losses. For the Colt 45s, they have won the 31st game of the year here in Colt Stadium. They have lost 45 here, and with their road record of 25 and 42, they have an overall record of 55 wins, make a 56 
wins and 87 losses. Colts have now won six in a row. This is the highest they have ever won in their history, and they have won 11 of their last 14 games. The Mets have lost six in a row with their loss here in the second game of the split day-night doubleheader. That's the story on the first game. The second game, I should say, on the first game, the Colts won it 4-3 to three when they came from behind to score two runs in the ninth inning to give the loss to Craig Anderson, his 17th of the year. The winning pitcher in the first game was Russ Kimmer, his fourth win against two losses. Once again, the final score in the second game, the Colts 6, the Mets 5, the winning pitcher Jim Umbright. He has now a record of two wins and no losses. The losing pitcher Roger Craig has record seven wins and 23 losses. That's the story right here from Cold Stadium. Don't forget, a game tomorrow, the final game of the season here in Houston between the Mets and the Colts. Game time will be at 5.55 New York time, and the game will be both on television and on radio. This broadcast came to you through the courtesy of the Liebman Breweries, New York and New Jersey, and Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation. Right now, I'd like to remind you to enjoy fine cold Rheingold. Rheingold Extra Dry. Those two little words, Extra Dry, tell you why Rheingold is preferred by more New Yorkers than any other beer. Enjoy a nice cold, ice cold glass of good Rheingold Extra Dry. Now, this is Ralph Kiner saying so long for Lindsey Nelson and Bob Murphy, our statistician Joe McDonald, our engineer Joe Kresnicka, our producer Joe Gallagher, and for cool cigarettes. You'll feel extra coolness in your throat when you come up to the menthol magic of cool. Once again, the final score of the two games here from Houston. The first game won in the daytime by the Colt 45s, 4-3. The second game won here tonight by the Colt 45s, 6-5 in 10 innings. So long, everybody. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network.